There were a couple of cup sets as they were actually just one Pittsburgh Riverhounds taking down the New England Revolution 1-0. Keith, that's a Sweet. pretty big result. But uh, Orlando City, the defending champions, getting knocked out in Charlotte 1-0. The Sac Republic, last season's finalists against Orlando City, losing to the Rapids 4-2 at home. LAFC started all teenagers, Heath, for the most part. Actually, they had, I think, eight teenagers in their starting lineup. They had a couple guys that were 20, and then they had a 38-year-old dad in goal <laughs> yeah, who it. ended up uh, saving some penalties. But that was a crazy game. Uh, LAFC were down a goal, or excuse me, up a goal, gave it up late to a guy named Simon Dawkins, for all you Tottenham fans out there, who had been retired for three years. And Monterey Bay head coach Frank Yalp had to talk him out of retirement to come out. He scored in the 90th minute. It came on as a sub. To make right. it one-one, then it goes into extra time. Monterey Bay scores first. The twenty-year-old scores. It's his first minutes of the season with the team, which is crazy. And then LAFC uh, tie it late to make it two-two. Goes into penalties, and that thirty-year-old dad goalkeeper uh, scores his own penalty that makes a save to win it. Unbelievable scenes for that. But that's what I love about the Open Cup. We get these types of stories. I'm just giving you one with Monterey Bay and LAFC. Mm -hmm. But LAFC squeaked by there. The revs going down. I thought was. Uh, Pretty big surprise. The the only USL versus USL matchup was one-way traffic for the Legion, Birmingham, who beat Memphis 9-0-1, 3-0. Cincinnati, though, getting a big result. First time they beat an NYCFC, I think, if I'm correct there. So when we look at all these, the Galaxy beat the Sounders 3-1. Uh, that, that's a big result. What do you say, Heath, in terms of which of these last 16 teams that have won? Which one do you think or two or three are going to really try to push on to win this thing? Because we know that not all MLS clubs look at it the same way. Uh, I mean, LA Galaxy rolled out their best team uh, against uh, Sounders, and I didn't know any of the Sounders players. Uh, so they're one that I think, again, they they went out there, and and it's not often you get a chance to really dominate. Again, I think Galaxy have, have actually dominated a couple of games this year, but they've only got that one win. But they've rolled out their, their top team, against the Sounders like B or C team. And, and that could be a big confidence builder or for them, a belief that there's something out there for them. For, for anyone below Major League Soccer, it's really tough to tell right now just because we're in this thick of the year that each game is going to come with a set of like, you look at it within the calendar of a season, right? Um, and you say, okay, over that next eight weeks, we've got, or next, I think I talked to Greg Vanny a couple weeks ago and he was like, over the next 24 days, we've got, eight games potentially if they advance in the open cup. And so when you get to that window, you look at like injuries, you look at like tensions, you look at the team, you look at the opportunity, you go, is it best to put our first team out right now? Or do we rotate? Do we go a little bit deeper? And so it's really hard well, sometimes well, to predict. What if you at. have, well, yeah, taking that into consideration, what if the open cup was your best chance to win a trophy this season? Cause the galaxy, okay. They would need a miracle run at this point to, right the ship and get into the playoffs. And maybe not that big of a run because well, their goal is that they have to get into the playoffs in advance, I guess, based on Chris, uh, Chris Klein's promise to them of, <laughs> of where he will walk out. Otherwise, we'll um, see if he follows through on that. I mean, he kind of, he kind of has to, yeah, he has now, to but, like the point. galaxy's got to somehow, uh, turn, turn that, turn that around. But yeah, I think when you look at it through that context, then yeah, I, I think you look at the LA galaxy and there's not going to be a better team on paper that, 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 puts out that quality of a team that's going to beat the LA galaxy in the open cup. That could be a big, big one for them this year as well. I mean, when you look at the seriousness that they took that match, knowing that they need to find a form and a rhythm, and maybe it was just a blip because they needed that game to, to bounce back and they needed to get a win. They needed to feel good in the locker room, which you and I have been in teams where, you know, leading up to a match like that, they're like, Oh, you're not going to play. And then things go wrong for three weeks. And you're like, yeah, we're playing our best team today. Cause we need every minute we can on the field to like, try to figure this out. Um, that that would be my my what I think has the best opportunity. What about you? Yeah, it's interesting. I think there's some clubs that are going to take it super serious, and and I respect that. I I think that uh, it'd be interesting to see how Colorado does. They're on a crazy unbeaten streak, haven't lost since March, and kind of flying under the radar in multiple competitions. I, I like the Columbus Crew. There's something about what they're doing and what they're building. I could see them, and I thought they were pretty excellent against Luton United in their five one win. Uh, I, I wonder about the other ones. I mean, yeah, the Galaxy, I think, will continue to roll out a good team. Ben Olsen's done a great job with the Houston Dynamo. They beat Sporting Kansas City, even though they were down a man for 55 minutes, 1-0. Salt Lake outlasting Portland 4-3. to three. It, It's I don't know. You start to get into these later rounds, and at what point does this kick in? Because I want to remind everybody, you win the Open Cup, 
you get an automatic spot into the CONCACAF Champions League. And the draw, by the way, is is literally in 10 minutes uh, yeah. for the next round. Um, so that's going to play into it, right? Who, yeah. who are you playing? Who's hosting? And, and everything that goes into that. But uh, I'm curious about LAFC. Obviously, they have the talent if they played it and rolled out their top team, right, to win this competition. Mm -hmm. But apparently the next round is right before the first leg or the week before the first leg of the CONCACAF Champions League final. Mm -hmm. And then if they get past the round of 16, the quarterfinal would be right after the second leg of the CONCACAF Champions League final. And so if you're Steve Trundolo, and given what we've already seen from him and his intention in this tournament, we're going to see a lot of teenagers, I think, for that first one. Maybe the second one changes if they're, oh, I don't know, coming off the potentially winning the CONCACAF Champions League final. Probably not going to roll out all your top guys. So they might, might have another two rounds of teenagers, which doesn't bode well because at some point, as they showed, a little bit of lack of uh, experience in trying to close yeah. up. But what an awesome opportunity for the young players to like totally to do. They got some, they got some super talented. Guys. You have like a second team, you have Academy and the opportunity. I, I remember when I first started doing some broadcast stuff, I was doing the Red Bull twos just to get reps and learn like what broadcast is. And I remember watching a lot of these players that were like 16 playing on in, in USL that weren't, they were still Academy kids. Right. And like the opportunity to play against adults and push yourself and now you add the layer of consequence of like you lose and you go home, like as a learning moment for a young player or a young team can go really wrong, but by and large is, is a great opportunity. And it's still in, in the regions, right, of, of how it's going to break up. So you have Southeast, you have Legion, Charlotte FC, uh, Birmingham Legion, that is, Inner Miami and Nashville Central is Austin, Chicago, Houston, Minnesota. So now we're all MLS in there. The West is uh, Colorado. LA Galaxy, LAFC, Real Salt Lake. And then you have Northeast, which is Columbus, FC Cincinnati, New York Red Bulls, and just the, the Riverhound. So um, not a lot of, I mean, you're, you're basically two teams left out of 16 um, that are non-MLS clubs. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So yeah, keep an eye out for the Open Cup draw. It's going to be happening here right after the show. And uh, I think we're going to get some tasty matchups. <laughs>